Hey everyone, my name is Derek and this is Hackbatch. Riddle me this though, what is that? If you guessed a robot, you'd be right on the money, but I'm not gonna give you any money. What I will give you is a walkthrough of how I plan on building this self-bouncing robot, which I call Anchor. So I've made a prototype of this robot once before, which was, while the first version did balance, you really didn't miss much. Last time around, everything was pretty much just zip tied and duct taped into place. This time around, however, I decided to go with a method of construction that was much more stable. Instead of using one bar of steel like I did in the previous version, I'm using these two threaded rods, which I can then slide on 3D prints. So the main advantage of this method of construction is really its modularity. The next module I need to design is the one that houses the main electronics above the battery. Before I jump into any design on the computer with CAD, I have to figure out how I want the electronics laid out. I cut some of the traces on this solderable breadboard, so that way I could create the 8-pin connector that would allow me to talk to the motor driver. design something in CAD that would support the main electronics. I started this with the same parent part that I use for all of the pieces that stack onto the robot. While trying to assemble the robot with all the electronics and wiring, I stumbled across a design flaw that I already knew was there. There was no way to access pretty much any part of the motor drivers. This made it difficult to attach the 8-pin connector from outside the robot, as well as access the terminal blocks. So in the process of trying to assemble the robot and slightly modify the original part, I tore it to pieces. Now I could move on to designing a second part. The second version of the motor driver mount allows access to the motor driver connections even while the robot is assembled. The battery clip is designed to hold a lithium ion drill battery. The advantage of this is it already has a low voltage protection and comes with a charger that's safe and easy to use. It attaches to the main power terminals to provide power to the motor drivers and the Arduino. Speaking of the Arduino, I'm using an Arduino Nano wired to an MPU6050 inertial measurement unit over I2C. That's nerd speak for the brain has a way to detect it is falling in any direction. This is something that will be compensated for in software with motor movements, but we'll get there when we get there. For now I'm using some code I cobbled together from some internet examples of self-balancing robots. Next, I'll be doing a lot more programming to design a working system that's easily adjusted. And with that, part one of this project comes to an end. It's already performing better to the previous prototype, and I look forward to improving it even more. Stay tuned for that, and thank you for watching.